Hey Robert here, this is the first BMW do-it-yourself video. Um, this is going to be on a oxygen sensor change and also a P1189 and P1188 uh, fault code repair. Tools you'll need to remove the oxygen sensors are you need a T25 bit or a screw to remove the air cam filter. You're gonna of course need a new oxygen sensor right here. I got Bosch um, o OEM's um, o um, oxygen sensors that I got from AutoZone for about seventy dollars. Um, you can buy a universal one, which is a little bit cheaper, saving you a bunch of a uh, like about three bucks, but you have to splice the wire and put on the adapter that you need to fit um, to fit for your car since it's a universal Bosch OEM um, uh, oxygen sensor. Um, another tool you need is a um, of course a torque wrench and an extension since we're going to be going down towards the manifolds where the pre-cat um, OG sensors are and you're also going to need um, a oxygen sensor uh, socket. Um, you can get these at any hardware store, they're pretty cheap like around three bucks, about a while back. So yeah, these are the tools you need. All right, sorry, it's a little bit dim around here since it's nighttime. Um, what happened? The problem that I had is I got my car smogged, but before that I had a check engine light and it read up as a P1189 uh, fuel uh, P189 fault code. It's a BMW fault code, um, and what happens is that it's um, the definition for that is a fuel control bank two sensor one. I didn't know much about it when I looked it up. It was, um, I heard people replace their um, oxygen sensors, fuel filters, um, cleaner or replacing their mass airflow sensors. And along with uh, some people actually got new fuel pumps. Uh, but there's other people that um, actually, they explained that you need to change your your, cy your cyclone something, I forgot. Um, and pretty much that's the general problem for them. But I kind of look, kind of look more into it later the bumper and I swapped them and what happens I ran I ran the car ran uh, ran around the block a couple times notice they're starting to shake I parked the car turned it off you know expect what's going on and I want to try it one more time and what happens that um, my shaking was gone and I already had the um, scanner already plugged in and it came up as a P1188 bank one sensor one so that tells me that uh, being two sensor one, which is the pre-cat OG sensor closer to the firewall, is the defective one and it needs to be changed. And that's the reason why I'm getting the fault code. So that's one way, and that's another way I will state that um, you can test see if your um, oxygen sensors are messed up is by switching them with a close one nearby and see if um, if the fault code will change. All right, what we have here is the location of the pre-cat O2 sensors for the BW E46. Um, right here we have bank two sensor one, which is the oxygen sensor right there in the back, which is right on your manifold, closest to the firewall. Um, then you have bank one sensor one over here, which is a little close, which is the one farther up. Let's see right there, right over there. That's the uh, oxygen sensor right there. So this, uh, so we're gonna be tackling this one right here, bank two sensor one, which is the farthest to the um, to the um, fireball. All right. So the first step to do this process to remove the oxygen sensor, uh, since we're being close, we're getting the one closest to the firewall, we're gonna need to remove the air cabin filter, uh, which is pretty much closest to the window. Um, there's three fasteners on the left, center, and right, and it just easily plastic pulls out right off. It's coming off like that. Put that off to the side, and we got your carrier cam filter. Uh, just put this off to the side, and as you see, we removed the fil um, air cam filter. We still have this in the way. This is removable. It has four T25 um, screws in this. Um, pretty sure it's T25. I use a T25, and it removes it uh, very well. So what we're gonna do is. 
remove these and pull the whole fit, uh, fixture out. Uh, before you do, you want to remove the wires that are attached to the fixture. It's, it's too much clips, comes right off. And just gently pull out the wires. So leaving this free by itself. Put this off. And just remove the screws now. Once you get all four out, this simply just pulls right off. You want to do a lift up and pull off. You might be kind of stuck together uh, since you have all that. Uh, probably this is probably stick really bad since it's never been moved. Unless it's been moved before, it'll come really uh, moved before it'll come right off pretty easy. So you get this put off to the side, and we have more room to work with going down. Alright, so we have big two sensor one uh, oxygen sensor right over here. Uh, it's already clipped on to place, so what you do is remove it. It's just push it down with your thumb, and pull it off. Um, there should be a wire company along with it. And the way to remove these the light, is that there's a clip on this side right here. You have a clip on it. And you just kind of like either you get a screw or dig your thumb down, down deep in there, right here. So that part where I'm going to put my thumb at. Focus. So that part right here, just dig your thumb down in there or a screw. And just like kind of pull off. And in the meantime, you want to kind of push down a bit. So you remove it off the clipping, off the binding. Uh, A second hand in here. It's gonna off like that. Um, I already moved this before. That's why it's so easy to take off. Uh, but usually you have to work one end to move that off. Then you gotta go on the other side and remove the other end. But since I already moved this off earlier, that's why it's so easy to take off. And yeah, so you got them removed. Um, you wanna go and free up the wiring. All right, we got the. Oxygen sensor ratchet, um, socket in there. Um, it's gonna be kind of troubling at first because it's gonna you're gonna have to kind of wiggle your way in there, um, and that's why we went with the. Uh, normally you can just uh, move it right away and unplug it, but since now we're it's kind of a hassle, so we're gonna unplug we unplug the the connection first. Um, then what we did next is um, put the socket in there, so. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be hard at first. You're gonna have to wiggle around a little bit and don't like force it down in there really hard. Just give it a little pressure and you know twist it around and also push down on it till it goes all the way down and fits in place. Then once it's in place, um, just with your extension, just torque it. Now since I already got the core kind of jammed in there, I'm going to stop. Uh, I duct taped this earlier, but since we have problems with the with the um, socket going in, I don't want to break it. I already got the socket out, thanks to Larry. Um, what happens is that the metal clipping that holds the, um, all your wires such as and also your oxygen sensor wire, uh, kind of jammed the um, jammed the socket in place, which is right on top of it. So what we want to do is get a screw or an extra hand, like which I have, Larry. Uh, kind of pushed it off as it was able to be pulled out to get the socket free. Now that we got it out and it's already out, I believe I can hand uh, hand unscrew this now. Yep, I can. So you're just gonna unscrew it by hand, if you can. 
and then be careful of the wires where it's smashing around and stuff like that but then again and And here's the oxygen sensor. Damn. Alright, so we have the old one right here. And where's the new one? Ow. New one right here. Only new. Mm, get to the cap. Uh, Bosch always comes with the uh, anti seize already on it. Um, I don't think you really need to spread them. Well, it kind of is, but yeah. So it's compared to old and new. It's a the big difference. And yeah. Pretty much, it's just the reverse process. Um, go ahead and get your new uh, oxygen sensor and just put it back in. So. You want to be careful when putting it back in, you don't damage the, the tip of it. And be careful what you hit too, also. And so generally, what you want to do is hand, hand tighten it in first. And... You know that. <laughs> Alright, so fitting these in, there's a specific certain there's a certain way you have to fit them in. Uh, as you can see, one side has a tiny, one side has a dip, and one uh, one has uh, one has a, a small square, and then one has like a bigger triangle dip, and you kind of want to look into where it fits in to the socket. So you can see, the bottom part has the triangle. Um, triangle piece in and the other one top has a small blank spot for the square so we know that and the way that it's fitted in is that the triangles on the bottom oh sorry about the light the triangles on the bottom so it's pretty much goes easily in all the way in snug in Alright, so I plugged back in the OBD2 reader and what happens is that um, I cleared the code since it's, um, it still believes that, that that part's still bad so I cleared the code and now I'm uh, running it right now to see if the code will ever come back up. <laughs> 